In the second video of a three-part series, I'm going to show you how to write a custom indicator to help determine when the Bollinger Bands are contracting or pinching together. Let's begin by looking at this daily chart of Abbott Labs. I've got the Bollinger Bands plotted on the chart with the default settings. And notice how that in times of higher volatility the bands expand and during the times of lower volatility the bands contract. One of the most commonly asked questions I get about Bollinger Bands is how do I write a formula to help determine when those bands are contracting or pinching together. And the reason why you might want to know something like that is because a lot of times in times of lower volatility or when those bands are contracting, a lot of times what will happen is, is that when the prices break out of that congestion, a lot of times they will break pretty hard in one direction or the other. So to write a formula to do this, I'm sure there's a lot of different ways to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and try to keep this as simple as possible. So I'm going to start off by creating a custom indicator using the Indicator Builder. To open that up, start by clicking on the tools up here at the top and choosing the Indicator Builder. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the New button over here on the right hand side and I'm going to start off by giving it a name. And when I create a custom indicator or system, I usually put a wild card at the very beginning of the formula, and that way all my formulas get grouped together. Otherwise, they get sorted alphabetically, and after you start writing quite a few formulas, it's pretty easy to misplace them. So I'm going to go ahead and call this one my Bollinger Band Indicator. Now, inside the formula box here is where we're going to put in the formula to help identify this pinching or the squeezing to the bands. And if you know exactly how to write the formula, of course, you can just type it out here. But if you need help, you can always click on the Functions button, and this will bring you to the library of the pre-written formulas that you have available inside the program. Now, the formula that we're going to write is going to reference the top band of the Bollinger Bands and the bottom band of the Bollinger Bands. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure the distance of how far apart or how narrow they are. So to find the formula to identify the top Bollinger Band, just scroll down to the B's inside this list here. So let me see if I can find this. And sometimes there's just so many of them here, you just kind of have to scroll through them. But here we have the Bollinger Band bottom and the Bollinger Band top. And these are the two that we want. So I'll start off with the Bollinger Band top. I'll select that one. And down here at the bottom, I'll click on OK. And that'll paste it in here for us. And to identify the Bollinger Band bottom, I'll do the same thing. I'll go back to my functions library and I'll scroll down to the B's again and find the Bollinger Band bottom. Try not to scroll too far. There we go. And click on OK. Now to fill out the information inside of this to identify the Bollinger Band tops and bottoms, the DA represents data ray. What is the Bollinger Band being calculated off of? In this case, it's going to be calculated off the closing price. The default parameters for the number of periods are 20. The type of moving average that we're going to use is a simple. And then the standard deviations are two. So the Bollinger Band top close comma 20 comma S comma 2. This is the standard or the default Bollinger Band settings. To identify the Bollinger Band bottom, we could just take the, those same settings, make a copy of them, and paste them right over the top of all this and this will identify the Bollinger Band bottom. Now a quick way to determine the distance between the two different bands is all you have to do is subtract one from the other. So in this case I've got the Bollinger Band top first and I'll subtract from it the Bollinger Band bottom. And let's take a look at that. I'll click on OK, click on Close, and let's go ahead and plot this indicator. And what we've got here is if we take a look at any point on this line, it'll tell you the number of points at that point in time or the measurement from the top of the band down to the bottom of the band. And it becomes pretty apparent by just looking at this indicator that I can tell pretty quickly if the bands are expanding or they're contracting. So let's go back into the formula. I'll go ahead and open it back up. Now once I know that this formula is measuring the bands exactly how I want them, I'm going to go ahead and reference this formula in other places. So what I'm going to do to help out here is I'm going to give this or assign this to a variable name so I can reference it in other parts of the formulas. So to assign this to a variable name, I'm going to go ahead and create a variable name called B1, followed by a colon, an equal sign, and then at the very end of this I'll put a semicolon. And by doing it this way, I can now reference B1 and it'll reference the difference between the top and the bottom of the Bollinger Bands. 
So next, what I want to do is I want to identify when those Bollinger Bands are contracting. So in other words, I want to know when this line is moving down. So to get started doing this, the first step in this is I just want to identify if the Bollinger Band is contracting or smaller than it was the previous day. So a way that I could write this, I could just say or ask the program, is B1 less than the previous day's value of B1? And to reference or find out what the previous day's value of B1, it'd be written as REF, open parenthesis, B1, comma, and then a negative 1. This will reference the previous day's value of B1. So I want to know if the current day or the current bar is less than or below the previous day's value. So we'll click on OK, click on Close, and now what we've got is we've got a binary indicator and what this is telling me is that every time that this is plotting a value of 1 it's saying that the answer to my question is yes or true. So let's go ahead and zero in on a section here of our chart here and let's take a close look at this. Now, what this is telling me again, I've asked it, is that is the Bollinger Band contracting or less than the previous day? And whenever this indicator is showing me a value of 1, I know that the measurement from the top band to the lower band is smaller than it was the previous day. Now, while this is telling me that the band is actually shrinking at this point, what I think might be a little bit more useful is rather than just telling me if the band is, is just contracting just at the very first point, is maybe after the bands have been contracting after a certain number of bars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this and I'm going to say tell me when the bands have been contracting for at least five bars. So to do that I'll go back into my formula here again. And again, we could write this formula in a number of different ways, but what I'm going to use next is I'm going to use another formula called the sum function. And the sum function will allow me to count how many times something has been true over whatever time range that I ask it for. So the way that I'm going to write this is at the very beginning of this formula, I'm going to say sum, open parentheses, and this is going to be the question that I'm going to ask and then I'm going to follow that with how many times or how many bars I want that to be true. So I'll follow that with a 5, meaning that I want that to do it for 5 bars and I want to know when that has happened 4 or 5 bars in a row. So I'll click on OK, click on Close, and now what I've got is at the very beginning right here, this is saying that on January 22nd, the answer to my question was yes or true. So what this is telling me at this point on our chart is that not only are the bands contracting, but they've been contracting for the last five bars. So let's zoom out here just a little bit. I'll click on the minus sign down here just so we can see a few different ones. But here you can kind of get a little bit better feel. And what this is now identifying is every time where these bands are starting to contract and they've been contracting for at least five bars. So if you're looking for securities where the bands are contracting, this could give you a watch list of securities to keep an eye on. So I hope that that's been helpful, and in the next video I'll show you how you can generate your own buy and sell indicators.